upset. I mean, it works. Back to the pH medicine. There's been several books out on the importance of pH, whether you're acid or alkaline. And then there's been confusing books written about what to eat, what to drink, what ruins the pH of the body. And my question to you is, for coffee drinkers and tea drinkers, does everybody have to give up coffee and tea to become alkaline? Well, this is where the bicarbonate comes in. I mean, I, I love coffee. I drink too much of it. Me too. But I, I love I tea know. also. <laughs> we should be having a I cup of tea stop. now. <laughs> uh, I, I'm still not about, still not ready to stop. Uh, and I don't have a perfect diet. I have a reasonably good diet. We eat very well here in Brazil <clears throat> compared to Americans. The food is much healthier. And, um, but if you, you're not perfect and or you drink coffee, which is, creates an acid in the body or eating a lot of meat or living in a toxic area in the city, and bicarbonate is a good answer because you can balance, you can test your pH, see what it is, and then you balance it by taking bicarbonate baths or drinking bicarbonate. That's great. Because after I read those other two books from other sources about increasing your pH, I was depressed because every time I had coffee, I said, well, my pH is shot for the day. It doesn't really matter what I do from this point forward. It's doomed. Well, that's not quite that bad, but... <laughs> well, I mean, and they're, of course, adding other things that are going on, but it's good to know that sodium bicarbonate can either balance that out or neutralize it. Does it neutralize an acidic thing like coffee and tea? Yeah, sure. Okay. Let's talk more about magnesium and magnesium chloride. So many people take magnesium tablets or capsules or magnesium citrate. There's a lot of confusion about what kind of magnesium to take, what is absorbable, what it actually does in the body. Some people take an ionic form of magnesium. What does all this mean? Well, <clears throat> I don't ask difficult best, questions. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> the best form of magnesium is actually magnesium chloride. It is the predominant form of magnesium in the sea. The second most usable form would probably be magnesium sulfate which is better known as Epsom salt. Uh, <clears throat> the, the problem with any kind of pill, <clears throat> any kind of formulation of magnesium in the pill form, or any actually any oral use, is certain complications, meaning uh, for the pill, t pill forms, you need uh, a lot of hydrochloric acid and good digestive conditions to absorb the, the magnesium. Taking magnesium orally, there's no guarantee you're going to absorb uh, any kind of decent portion of it. Uh, the second problem is if you take enough where it's a good dose for medical purposes, it provokes diarrhea. So you're limited in how much you can give orally and how useful it's going to be. If you're going to drink or take it orally, magnesium chloride is the, be the best form, without doubt. Because the chlor both the chloride is very helpful and useful and as, as a magnesium. Now, magnesium is, and people don't really understand magnesium, magnesium is life. Without magnesium, there is no life on this planet. And we'd be, you know, a desert. It's the, act it's the atom in the middle of chlorophyll that is responsible for capturing sunlight and turning it into chemical energy. Without magnesium, that's impossible. And so there's no plants and there's no life. Is that what you call the lamp of life? Uh, yeah, I have a chapter called The Lamp of Life, and it talks about the real fundamentals of magnesium, which is into everything in life, in the human body, into DNA, RNA, into cell wall permeability, into two, 325 enzyme reactions, um, blood, blood brain barrier integrity. Uh, ATP production, glutathione production. I mean, it, it's an you know, endless list, meaning everything's included. So when we're deficient in magnesium, which according to the medical officials, probably around 70% are, if you use common sense, probably 95% of Americans are deficient in magnesium. It's like running your car without oil or low on oil. 
And actually, there's a product called magnesium oil, which is actually just pure magnesium with wa in water, magnesium chloride. And they call it an oil because at 35% concentration, it's, it feels like an oil. You put it on your skin, and it absorbs right through the skin. And I am the famous transdermal doctor. I'm the guy who wrote the, my first published book, was Transdermal Magnesium Therapy. And with all, any, anybody I work with, with uh, late-stage cancer or any kind of, you know, desperate situation or any really serious chronic situation, I always recommend that people do magnesium massage, which is a treatment for Cleopatra herself. Really? Oh, yeah. Talk about it. It's fascinating. Well... The, the best way, I mean, there are many ways of taking magnesium. You can inject it, and it'll save your life in a heartbeat, and that's what uh, cardiologists do in the emergency room or intensive care wards. It's injectable. You can nebulize it right into the lungs. You can drink it. You can throw it in your baths, uh, or you can have, take this magnesium oil, spray it all over your body, and it gets absorbed through the skin. It's actually the best way to take magnesium because you can put a lot on the body. It won't provoke diarrhea. It bypasses the uh, digestive system, and it saturates all of your tissues. And you put, you put it on the body, and then you dream of dreams medically, and then you have somebody, whether it be skilled or not, it could be a loved one in the family, or you hire somebody or a nurse, and they just you don't need to massage it in, but the, the dynamics of touch. In my work, I have two chapters, one called The Psychology of Touch and one called Therapeutic Healing Touch. And touch itself is a beautiful thing. If we don't touch babies at all, they die. It's a very necessary thing. Medically, it's like a, like a lightning rod. It gr it'll ground the energy. It'll ground the person, help them come back to their center, help them feel nourished, and decrease stress. And if you're giving the magnesium at the same time, which is physio physiologically is, is a pure tonic. It's tuning up everything. Can you use this magnesium chloride spray on almond oil or some type of coconut oil for the body? Oh, sure. Sure, you can mix it with anything. Wow. I mean, it's pretty slippery as it is. As it is. I use a, a magnesium gel, which is the same thing but with a gel agent, put a little of that on top of the oil, and then you can do regular massage. But sure, you can use almond oil or any of these very nice oils. So what did Cleopatra do? Well, they just didn't know much about magnesium in those days. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what did she do? Well, they used to use uh, all different kinds of oils, like uh, essential oils. Do you use essential oils? I used to many, many years ago. I'm not using them now. Any particular reason, or it just you were on to yes. other things? Well, I moved to Brazil where things were not so available, living at the end of the world. And now, I, now I live in a nice city, but uh, <laughs> certain things you get away from when you're when you move. I left the United States uh, eight, in 91, 18 years ago. Why'd you leave? Well, actually, I left. Uh, I, I, uh, one morning, I prayed to God. First time I ever asked for anything for myself. I prayed uh, for a new life, and this was after I had this uh, separation from my wife, and I won't tell you the whole story, but one morning I woke up, my heart was bleeding. I prayed for a new life, and five hours later, I went to visit a friend sat down on her couch, and in, this was in Gainesville, Florida, and in ran this other American girl screaming about a place in, uh, in the middle of the heartlands of Brazil that she and a group of people had just bought, like a whole valley. And my skin just goosebumped, and I said, I literally said, shit, and I said, God is speaking to me in English, answering my prayer, telling me exactly where my new life was waiting. And I didn't doubt for a second. I said, oh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to argue with this. I'm just going to go. I burnt all my bridges, went, and uh, I haven't been back to the States in 15 years. Wow. I understand it's easier to practice medicine and to do advanced health care and wellness work outside of the United States. Do you find that that's true? Yes, that's true. How sad. I mean, how sad in some ways.